So this is uh, what we're working with. Um, there's a lot of really good advantages to building right here. Um, and there are a few challenges, septic's one of them. We're really close to the road. Um, it's nice access for customers and people taking classes, workshops, employees. And then there's a lot of room for gardens and compost areas, work spots, equipment. So here we are, this is a nice flat area we're gonna be using for greenhouses and modified um, mushroom hoop houses. This is the area I'd like to keep for um, drop-offs of substrate materials from arborists and other um, sawdust producers, um, compost we can drop off and pick up here. It's a really nice area for trucks to run, uh, turn around in. Um, we can flatten it out some more. Uh, you can see the power line there. That's right next to the road. That's Coman Valley. So this power line is where we would be drawing power from. You can see that's our driveway coming off of Coman Valley. And right across the road here is the location we are looking at to build our facility. So under current regulations, we would need to be 60 feet away from the road. That would give a nice little area in that dark spot underneath the oak tree. Uh, for an outside kind of uh, workspace slash meeting spot and then we would cut back into that hill a little bit keeping it all under regulations for permits and I think we could fit maybe like a I would like to do a 60 foot building 50 60 foot building in there um, then that's the road going up the hill to the second area where we will be having the containers. So here we are coming up to our water hookup. This goes up to a spring, which is way back in the woods. This is uh, part of the neighbor's property, but we do have some water rights currently, and um, we will be asking for more and then running line down to the facility, which you can see goes down our road. You can see we have Currently two 25 foot containers, which we plan to convert into grow houses. And then we have another 20 foot steel connex up there. And we can use that for an inoculation room. Um, this little shed will have to be refitted. It's about to fall down. And this point of the road will be where we cut off public access. We'll have a gate here. We have uh, an electronic arm for a gate already and we just need to install some posts. This we've been flattening out and building up for quite some time. This is a beautiful little stream that comes every winter. We definitely have to do some work on access on this road, a culvert to be able to access our containers down there. Now these are in the shade most of the day and they will stay a nice temperature once they're insulated and our cost will be pretty low. This is the area that we've been developing. We've been getting a lot of dirt from the county and it'll be interesting to see if we could do some remediation on it. There's a lot of toxins and oils in the the dirt from the side of the road but we've been able to build this place up quite a bit here we have a bunch of lab equipment this is our huge lab fridge we're thinking about turning this into a dehydrating unit inside our commercial kitchen over here we have a five foot baker and co laminar flow hood um, this is a really nice machine I think this would be our second flow hood in the lab. Over here we have some stainless steel lab drawers and I have a countertop for that. And then over here we have a bunch of drop-in HEPA filters that will be used for clean rooms and um, other spawning areas. Here we are going over to our containers. 
This is where we currently have our 40 gallon steam jacketed kettle. It's currently set up for liquid natural gas. We will probably have to convert it to propane if we will uh, be using it out in our commercial kitchen on the property. Currently they do not deliver LNG. Here's the other container. This one's in a little bit better condition. You can see we have a bunch of rack systems already ready to go. Thank you.